Hello, hello, everybody. Boy. This game? <laughs> well, welcome to the stream, everyone. I'm Michael Weiss. This is for Atlanta United Fan TV. This is finishing up the uh, game we just saw at the Benz against Toronto. Ended in a 1 1 draw. My immediate reactions are that this game, we deserve to win this game by every metric imaginable. Um, we uh, really should have won two to one. That feels like the scoreline that we deserved, and that feels like that based on what I saw in the game, it seemed like how the end should have happened. Um, like when you look at the game and you see two one at the end, you'd be like, that makes sense. You know, all the statistics, everything bores that out. You kind of go, that makes perfect sense. However, that's not what we got. We got a 1-1 draw because a controversial ref call called an offside on Geomachus. Uh, I think it was on Geomachus. Yeah, or is it on... I think it was on Geom... No, it wasn't on Geomachus. It was on the other one. It was on Parata, I think. Um, but anyway, that was um, controversial to say the least. They were talking about how it's the, you know, the shoulder, the upper body, does that go over, you know, past the defender. From every angle that I was looking at, Mike Conte, Jason Longshore were looking at, they all said, they all thought, no, 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 that's not offside. I concur. I guess the ref and everyone else was looking at some other angle that I didn't get to see. So, it's what it is. Yeah. Bernard Esky or whatever his name is, that guy's goal was very good. It was like a grass cutter. Um, rocketed into the corner. Brad may have, like a world-class goalie, may have been able to get there if they were faster, sharper. Um, Brad just is not that. Um, he almost got there, just wasn't quite fast enough. I mean, the guy's, a, you know, he was a star at Juventus, so he's got that firepower in him. It's to be expected. It just stinks because outside the box, completely against the run of play, no one expected it. I mean, you kind of have to close guys down when they're at that shooting point, but you'd think they would dribble a couple more steps, but this guy's world class. He's just going to take that shot and bury it. Our goal of Rosetto, didn't see that coming. First of his MLS goals, which is surprising. <laughs> um, but I guess it's about time, better late than never. Uh, I'm happy he got his goal. He's been wanting one for a long time. Um, it was almost like, it was almost, I thought at one point it was like two deflections. I know it was definitely one and it looked like it hit off the guy's hand too. So that ball was destined for the goal no matter what. Um, it would have also been kind of neat if, I mean, I'm happy for Rosetto's goal, but it would be kind of neat if, you know, uh, they got a penalty out of it and Gio stepped up and scored it and got his, got his goal. <laughs> got his goal. So, that would have been exciting. So, how is everyone doing in the chat tonight? We're going to be doing some fan interviews, um, talks to people. AJ and Mark are going to be coming on as well. Once he uh, dials in from the road, he's down at the stadium like last week. That goal was legit. I listened to the radio broadcast. Yeah, I do the same thing with, with Mike Conti and Jason Longshore. Um, I didn't really know who the, uh, the national broadcasters were. Um... I know, how do we not line, have line technology on VAR? That was, again, I just, I need to see more angles. That was very upsetting. The ref was controversial, period. In all seriousness, I think he needs to be looked at. Yeah, I mean, like, he, there was a lot of calls, a lot of calls against Atlanta that were soft, a little ridiculous. Toronto was flopping like crazy. I guess that's kind of the, the recipe book for playing against Atlanta now. Seems like every team just is going to flop, 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 flop. Our guys fought with grit. Yeah. Um, I was thinking to myself as I was writing up some notes about the end of the game, I didn't notice a bad performance from anyone from our team, which is rare. Usually there's at least a couple like glaring errors that lead to us losing. Um, but we, I don't really think anyone made that like really like glaring mistakes. Um, so, I mean, I was just kind of tip your hat to, uh, Bernadensky, he just buried it. Um, you know, good for him, I guess. And then, uh, 
we really should have just took and capitalized on our chances and scored and won two to one or three to one. We really should have, but I think a lot of that is ring rust. I think that's a lot of, you know, still working out some of the kinks. I'm excited to see what the attacking power of this team is going to look like when it finally fully gets going. Um, I hope everyone else is too, because I mean, that essentially should be two to one. And if that's two to one with us being rusty, I'm expecting like three goals a game then I'm hoping against, especially a team like Toronto who is struggling to enter this game at any point. They were pinned the like entire game. Anything they did was against their own play. We looked really good tonight. I was excited watching the game. Yeah, I also felt that excitement. It was um, it was powerful because uh, like when you're watching, you're thinking the whole time, you can't count us out. You know, we always might have some late minute heroics and magic left in the old top hat. So it's always exciting to keep an eye on. Arujo had a few bad passes. I mean, yeah, he's just he's just such a mixed bag, trying to be fancy in the showman. Yeah. Um, I mean, even when he is being, I mean, when he's successful with the fanciness, boy, is it nice <laughs> and it looks good. Um, I just want him to be more successful. I just wish his rate of fancy successfulness was higher. Midfield looked good, but the attack needs to improve. Yeah. I mean, most of the game we played without Gio and Etienne, when they came on, I thought we were a lot more dangerous. Um, and rightfully so we should be, we should have been up two to one uh so midfield didn't look so shaky yeah um that is a was a huge contention coming into this would we see improvement from a pairing of Ibarra and Rosetto and we have I was extremely surprised I thought it was like a like a giant improvement over the other times um so I uh, I think I'm just seeing if waiting for AJ to pop on in, and he is there. Hello, hello. Yo yo. Hey hey hey. Let me get you. Uh, let me get you on here. Let me get you on here. All right. Yeah. Let me get oh. you on here. Oh. There we go. Okay. There he is, AJ. There welcome. We welcome to your stream. <laughs> oh, nice. ah. Well, it's like the winter, He's you know? Jumping up again on me here. And then it might. Oh, oh that's because Mark is uh, popping in as well. There's Mark. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome. What up? What up? What are we live? We are. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, well, what'd you what'd you guys think? I just got done kind of dishing out my initial reactions to the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, Mark, go ahead. Um, <laughs> it's a funny, funny game. <laughs> oh man, because honestly, like, I think purely in terms of eye test, I like this performance better. Um. Yeah, you know, like I think from the beginning, it's it, it's interesting. Like we'll, I mean, you know, we'll get into the details of it, but um, from start to finish, um, you know, that purely eye test um, movement off the ball, touches in the box. I thought all of that was a little better um, than last week. I thought Barry um, did a job, you know, a, a pretty decent job. Um, it, it just made the attack a little more effective and I thought the big thing to me was that Toronto really didn't seem that dangerous um, on the counter like so like last week you know I felt like uh, Lane and I were a lot more vulnerable in possession and like it felt like every turnover was leading to like a good chance um, this week I felt like uh, it was a combination of um us being in more control and maybe just toronto just sitting deeper i was actually surprised at how deep toronto sat at times you know it'd be like five six people in the box you know so uh yeah yeah it is what it is i think we're a bit unlucky um i 
from the angles I saw, I thought that that was onside. But, you know, overall, um, I I think this performance was better than last week's, and that has me optimistic. You, AJ? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely some great points there, man. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, the irony is that we look better to some extent, but we don't walk away with three points here. Uh, we walk gotcha. away with only the share of the points. And it's that. It's like, uh, it is where we look a little like bereft of ideas uh, <laughs> in the first half. Um, and yeah, you know, it's a deep block. It's really difficult to break down. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, they sat really deep so it's yeah we don't we don't have those like uh multiple players that can uh you know beat you on the dribble and really unsettle those type of defenses um almada being you know one of the really only ones uh so we yeah often times have to settle for shots from a deep and we, we, yeah we've seen and i think the good thing here was that we we didn't really take as many shots from this uh, as last match, so there's progression. That's mm -hmm. good. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Luis Adarujo, he had a he had a chance maybe to uh, you know shoot from distance, and he thought better of it. Uh, he had a shot on goal this match. Progression. I mean, I think yeah, I, I think you're right. It's like uh, this performance does inspire a little bit more, especially in that second half when uh, Yorgos Dakimakis uh, does come on, and so does Derek Etienne. Derek Etienne, of course, assists uh, Hosetu for the goal and uh, take nothing away from the goal in terms of the deflection. Um, but yeah, I think uh, you know setting him up, I think, was the uh, the key there. Being being a man on the dribble, I mean, he was uh, when he came on. Etienne looked like a problem for Toronto. Yes, like he, uh, you know, he was uh, getting uh, interceptions and then he was going at their defense and uh also i i peep on his uh his twitter that he's an arsenal fan so oh, okay yep. uh I'm, I'm already uh i can i can see myself becoming a fan of Etienne a little bit uh I on Etienne, okay but uh yeah so it's uh it's one of those things i mean he i think as well learning from maybe watching Arsenal as well. Like, that's a good thing, I think, because there are some really good ideas of what they're doing that, yeah, you know, uh, being direct as a forward on the, you know, on the win. Like, that's what you need to do. You need to beat your man and cause problems. And, yeah, he was doing that. Like, plenty. so. What did you guys think about uh, Caleb Wiley? <laughs> Yeah, see, this is the thing about Kevin White. He's like, he's not doing poorly. It's just that he's miscast as a left winger. That's really like, what it is. It's just, yeah, it's just not his position. And he doesn't have the complete skill set in his toolbox to really do the job yet. And so, And even so, I don't... We're against Toronto, he kind of looked like he was meant to be there because they had trouble dealing with him. I mean... He did really good. <laughs> I was very impressed yeah, by was, him. So, yeah, he, he was getting himself in really good spaces. Mm -hmm. It's just that that final ball. Yeah. That yeah. I mean, he had just, he had a couple of good there. centers, uh, like low crosses mm -hmm. that if someone was there, um, you know, they could have buried it. And I was impressed he got there. Um, yeah, he had a really good game. I was very impressed by him. What did you guys I, think about? Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, just real quick on that. Yeah, I mean, I thought in general um, there was joy down the left, you know, and I think that um, um, Gutman as well, I think, deserves credit for, you know, the way he's able to overlap and combine with, uh, well, whoever really is at left wing. But, uh, yeah, you know, the goal comes from the left wing, uh, in this case being Derek Etienne, right, uh, providing, I don't know if it was the assist or the pass before the assist, but either way, basically came through him. And, you know, I think... In terms of Wiley being miscast, you know, specifically the fact that, like, as we talked about last week, I've talked about last week, he's essentially a touchline winger in that position, and so like his options when he gets the ball there is basically to cross or maybe beat a man and dribble into the box, right? 
Whereas Etienne, it's like he can cut in, he might shoot, he might pass, he might take it to the end line. Like he just has that a bit more, that extra option, yeah. I think, actually ends up being making a big difference in those moments. And so, um, especially yeah, coming I, on late, too. Exactly. So, I mean, like, no disrespect to Wiley, totally agree. Uh, but I do think I'd like to see Etienne start going forward. Yeah, he's, he's no doubt the starter for that. And I'm just happy to see Caleb giving him a little bit of a uh, competition yeah. for that. But that was just cool to see that tonight. Yeah. Um, what did you guys think mm -hmm. of uh, the quite improved pairing of Ibarra and Rosetto today? Uh, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mark. It's It's interesting because, yeah, this is where, you know, I'm curious. Like, I, I do think that Toronto sat really deep. Um, now, you know, was it it's kind of a chicken and egg for me, you know, it's like, was it that the midfield was so in control um, that Toronto was forced back or were they just set up to concede that much space? And, you know, did it, did that make it easier on them? But, um, you know, just isolating their performances. Yeah. I thought that Ibarra was a lot more solid. It seemed like he was the deeper of the two. Um, Mike, you were at home, right? You watched the game on TV. Yeah. So I'm sure you heard the commentator making the point in the second half, especially that Hasetu pushed up, Mm -hmm. You know, and I mean, he was there for the goal. And, you know, talking about those long shots, it is ideal to get shots at the box. And Atlanta actually did a much better job of it this week. So last week, uh, we took 20 shots, 16 were outside. This week, we took 16 shots, 10 were inside the box, right? Now, I don't think outside of the shot boxes should be completely avoided because, again, like if the they defense just have is to gonna... be on frame, they have to be on target. Exactly. And it's also, you know, it's the quality of the shot itself. So you look at the type of shot that Hasetsu took, that ball coming across, he's able to run onto it. He has time and space to take it. And like, at, you know, sometimes like, you know, if you want to put that many players in the box, you go ahead and do that. That can work against you. And that's exactly what happened to Toronto on that goal. So, um, yeah, I think uh, credit to the midfielders. You know, I think they've I think they've earned themselves another week. Put it that way. You know, like, yeah, I think it's fair. <laughs> Because <laughs> at the end of the day, we have Sadich. Uh, I assume we'll eventually have uh, Alonzo as well. And so, um, I mean, the ideal also thing would be well to... returning. Yeah, right. that's right. So, yeah. so, you know, if we have some rotation going there, that'd be good. But, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, like I said, I think they've earned... I think they showed enough to wear, okay, you know, I'd start them next week. Yeah, it's competition for places. And that's that's where, uh, you know, the, the complacency reads the just apathy really probably a lack of a better word but um but it's that yeah it's uh Husetsu, uh he was taking more shots than he normally did he was you know more on the attack than uh, we usually see him where he's a little bit more passive uh trying to be the uh, the connector trying to uh, be the player that uh you know uh, keeps things ticking but uh, yeah, Abara as well, like winning a lot of the balls in midfield. Uh, yeah, he's definitely more mobile than Sosa, so you know, he's uh, a good foil uh, to right. win Sosa. I would imagine, yeah, is uh, you know the, the starter, but uh, right. but it is one of those. Yeah, like the competition for places will help, uh, and yeah, they they both had a really good game. Um, now, like the question is, can they keep it up? That's that's been the thing. Yeah, because we've been. <laughs> Yeah, we've just been clamoring for more quality in our midfield, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, they they finally are showing a little bit, which is good. But um, unfortunately, we don't win this match, and um, you know, I think that still is that we're all culpable in terms of all the players. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, so you know, why didn't we not, uh, you know, score a winner? Which we should get to. Which uh, yeah, Yorgos Sakimakis was that. Awesome. So, uh, just for clarification, it's on the initial ball. It's on Parata's header. I think Parata is onside. I think there's a shot where, like, it's one of those things where, you know, when uh, the defensive line pushes up and, like, a defender puts their foot back to, like, move forward, his foot was back. Like, I don't know, man. Like, we don't do the drawing lines thing in MLS. If we drew lines, though, I feel like he would have been on. I don't know. So I it's, uh, it feels unlucky. And I really hate when like, 
attacking players don't get the benefit of the doubt on close off sides. They should. What do they want? Like zero yeah. zero games more often in MLS? I don't understand. Like give so, give ties yeah. to the runner. It doesn't make any sense to me. Exactly. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's like if it's clear enough that he's offside, then you would overturn it. Right. You know. Right. So if there's daylight. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, it's it's one of those. It's whatever. Um, but yeah, but I do think he was on and. I mean, in that moment, you saw the the value of a uh, Yakumakis, right? I mean, like I thought, you know, from the moment he came in, because he came on with that TN, I did think like his presence in the box made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. um, and like the way he pounced on that rebound, you know, that's just that's beautiful. You know, if he if he's able to do that consistently, he'll easily score ten to fifteen. It's a goals. taste of what's to come. Yep. So, that um, coaching ability that you need, that fox in the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need the. Uh, you know that striker instinct to uh to smell where the ball is going to land mm -hmm. and yeah he's yeah as well like the uh you know the touches as well were yeah he seemed like a you know a good target for where he was able to lay it off you know pretty decent touch uh hopefully yeah you know um uh, that is a sign of things to come is mm -hmm. you know uh how well of a, a complete forward game he can play um but yeah it's it's one of those like uh he was definitely a focal point uh later on in the match for sure i mean that i think that defenders that, were aware uh, of him they were afraid of him they marked him yeah. they respected him yeah. so yeah and it's yeah. that's key because then it draws more players and then that frees up you know some of our other players uh that are a little you know that are a little deeper and uh yeah it gives them more space to operate that's gonna be really really uh really useful in the, the games going forward and that's what it is i think that second half looked a lot better when we actually had the players that uh yeah. are supposed to be our starters yeah uh come in and yeah we looked a lot more dangerous but unfortunately we, we couldn't find a winner in this one um but well, we were arguably at least we did but point. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah i mean when it you look that. at when you look at how the game played out when you you know you watch the entire game and you look at the statistics if you were to see two one atlanta wins it all makes sense it's you know but mm -hmm. it just you know it was taken away from us so <laughs> it really should be two one but oh well yeah well you know we yeah. still have right. Oh, go, ahead. go for it yeah i mean like that and that's the thing you know like for all the positives we're still having trouble creating clear-cut chances and you know i was thinking about it we had similar conversations in 2018 at times, you know, there were times where teams stymied us, you know, we're trying to figure out, it's this, right? Like, especially when you're one of the, let's say proactive teams of an MLS, one of the possession teams, it's, it can be difficult at times. And so I think that um, like, this is a, this, this performance is a good building block, but they'll have to figure that out as the season goes along. Like, you know, how to get the best out of this attack and how to break teams down because I mean, Atlanta are going to face this on a near weekly basis. So yeah, everyone's going to sit in low, especially at the bench. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. At home, but uh, away, that will be interesting because next week, of course, uh, Charlotte. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll uh, we'll definitely help with their uh, attendance numbers as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, not to get too far off into that, but yeah, it's going to be interesting how we adapt on the. You know, on the road, away. It's like, will we be still trying to play a possession type of game, or will we have the quality to be able to? Yeah, I mean, will we be able to impose ourselves on the road? That'll be a really good question, uh, especially with, you know, the uh, the starters still not really being in, in the side yet. Like, obviously, yeah, or we still have a bunch of uh, depth, essentially playing um, in the starting eleven. So. But uh, what are the uh, what are the people in the chat saying? I'll I'll get to that in a second. There was one question I had that I wanted to get your opinion on. Was there anyone at fault? What could we have done better? How do you stop Federico Bernadeschi? That shot, that grass cutter. Like, what do Ooh, you do there? I mean, yeah, was that uh, was that on I us, think, or is he just Wonderkin scoring that? I mean, he is Wonderkin, but it also is like he just was able to waltz right past us and. Uh, like, uh, we're really aware of his strengths there, and that's uh, that's fault on I think players as well as coaching. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
that's something that uh, you, you can't allow a, you know, a player like that that much time and space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, that's, you, you're, it, like, even where the shot happened and whatnot, it's just like, and it's that too. Like, Uzan, I think we know this. Yeah. Shots from distance are his Achilles. Uh, no, no pun intended on this. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> damn. But, yeah, he's uh, not getting there. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> um, I will say, too, just on that goal, real quick. Uh, well, first of all, like, Toronto finished the match, even with that goal, with a 0.39 expected goals, right? So, um, it was a it was a quality shot, I guess. Um, but also on I think it was Larea, I forget who exactly uh, makes that overlap and it makes Gutman's like it just makes Gutman hesitate that split second and Bernadeschi is you know that's all the time he needs. I mean we're talking about um, a former Juventus player, you know like a uh, former I don't know I don't know if he still gets caught off for Italy or what, but. He, he's he's one of the better players of MLS safely, right? So yeah, he's in the run for M, uh, MVP of the league, I hear. So oh, oh well, I mean, fair enough. But yeah, you know, so it's just one of those things. It's um, it's yeah, one of the few attacks in Toronto look dangerous. And oh, uh, Toronto, <laughs> they always play they, they always gut punch us. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, uh. Just play they possum just, the whole was, time. They looked then... ripe for the taking the entire game. This was our game mm. to lose 100%. Mm, mm, so annoying. They invited right. us to win the game, and we just had trouble with it. Yeah. Right. Because, right. yeah, even Bob Bradley uh, mentioned after the match that uh, in the, the presser uh, that, yeah, they did not play. He didn't feel like they played good soccer. But well, I can I can agree with him. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. I think we all agree with him. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> but they I were mean, able like, to. Yeah, this is a good point for them on the road. Yeah, and I I'm not surprised to hear Bob Bradley say that because I was thinking about that. You know, like Bob Bradley at <laughs> least in MLS. <laughs> And he and, and and you know he's been he's coached all over the world. He's coached teams that like finished first in the league and stuff. So, you know, he tends to play more proactive soccer. So, yeah, like I said, I'm surprised that Toronto sat that deep. And if he's saying that, maybe, maybe we forced them to sit back, you know, more than they wanted to. So, I don't know. We'll see. It's it's early in the season, so it's hard to judge these teams in terms of their quality. Um, right. It's also their depth. Uh, they had a lot of players. In Obviously, Lorenzo and Signe as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know the big name, but then mm -hmm. you know some other other pieces that presumably would make them a lot stronger of a uh, you know of a of a chance to really I think do some damage against us in this match. But uh, you know it, it's it's fair. It's a fair assessment that uh, I would say if anybody would say, hey, yeah, we okay, we we salvaged the point, but we also draw points. You know, like there's, yeah. I think there's merit to that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Um, not the best result, but uh, you know, I mean, you you all know how I feel about uh, the eye test, especially at this point in the season. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you know, it's, it's just game by game. You know, don't want to get too ahead of yourself one way or the other in terms of uh, making conclusions about this team. And I do want to reserve judgment until the new signings are fully embedded in the team. So, and I mean, we have we still haven't seen LeBron really, so. Yeah, he didn't play this game. Yeah. So that's Which makes sense. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, we're, ch we're you know, trying to chase a winner. So it's, uh, it's one of those ring on defender. I mean, honestly, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, Yorgos Yakimakis, uh, you bring him on, but then, okay, yeah, you have Etienne, but it's also, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they sat deep, we should have maybe brought in another attacker, even, mm -hmm. and, um, cause we've seen Thiago Almada be able to sit a little deeper as well, yeah. and, uh, just, I mean, he's so press resistant that it's just like, he could, he'll, you know, he could be that box-to-box -box guy, yeah. and, uh, Still be like the deepest lying midfielder, and you wouldn't be able to get the ball off him. So it's like you've seen this in uh, in yesteryear. So definitely, uh, yeah. <laughs> so some crazy noises happening around me. So I just gotta you gotta check my six, to make sure nothing's going down. You know, the dirty say, streets uh, of Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say let's uh, let's see what the chat's saying, and I want to talk more about Almada because, oh boy. <laughs> 
Dude. Yeah. All right. Do you want me to take a look at some chat questions? Sure. Yeah. Yes. All right. What Let's are the good see. people saying? Let's see. Um, Michael, do you have a Twitter yet? Yes, I do. I'll post it in a little bit. <laughs> just, just made one recently. All right. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Toronto did a lot less today than San Jose, so I'd reserve, you know, my midfield thoughts. So that's a that's a decent shot, I think. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they didn't really like put a lot of pressure on them, so they w didn't have the opportunity to make as many mistakes. But I think the like the Ibarra's tackles, excellent, especially the one on Bernadeschi in the beginning. Um, that was really great. Um, Rosetto kind of like usually always just has a high successful pass percentage and he continued to do that this game without any like god awful you know mishaps so that's good same with Ibarra no god awful mishaps I mean really no god awful miss from anyone on the team that I noticed right uh let's see I was nervous going into this season but we're looking really really good that's right pretty idiot we definitely are looking a lot better uh Gavin says let's be real we actually did pretty well but Sean Johnson is just a very good goalkeeper however we deserve yep. to win and we were robbed <laughs> I'm so sick of every goalkeeper having their best yeah, day versus LA United. Bro, oh, yeah, some of those saves he made, oh, like outstretched. That like, one-handed palm, like. Oh, gosh, yeah, that's the other thing, too. Just, yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, it's uh, Sean Johnson is always usually really good. And yeah. So, uh, there is that, but it is I, maybe there is a factor on these uh, away, you know, goalkeepers when they come in, they get you know, get hyped from our energy. Yeah, <laughs> they rise we all to the know that goalkeepers are uh, are a special breed, mm -hmm. and you know, it, you gotta be weird to be a goalkeeper. So you know, yes. it's maybe that, you know, because otherwise it's kind of unexplainable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, Brian Barrett says Ibarra looking strong back to back games. Yep. Um, da, da, da. Ibarra has oppressed me, Gavin said. <laughs> Brian says, I'm afraid Toronto might be trash. They're in trouble if they're going to play every game like this, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, we're lucky yeah. Insigne did not play. I don't know if that would have done that much if Insigne played, but I don't know. I Maybe. think he would have affected a lot, actually, because uh, okay. I mean, he's, he's also. MVP caliber type yeah. of player, and mm -hmm. so uh, you know. So do you think you that would like switch as well? You think that would have switched their entire like strategy from low line mm -hmm. set to, to like actually trying to go win the game? I think it would have been. Uh, I think a little bit more where uh, Diomande would have wouldn't have been on an island uh, at least before he uh, <laughs> went off injured, of course. Right. But uh, and so. That also didn't help him either. I mean, mm. Starting striker as well went off. So it's right. it's definitely like at that point they didn't have an outlet. They didn't just uh, yeah, yeah, you know, go on uh, go on your talents. And Berdeshi, you know, did the did enough to at least uh, you know give him a point. So yeah. I think that's the uh, there's a difference there. I think uh, they had some other players uh, missing as well. Yeah, it's just one of those, like, I, I would expect Toronto to be in love with what we saw, and it's maybe, yeah, we uh, we also saw um, our midfield win their battles, so good on them. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, also the, uh, they, <laughs> when you when you park a bus and it's that deep, it's just going to be uh, a lot easier on your midfield line, too, so. Yeah. What did you guys think of Pineda's coaching strategy for this game? I mean, um, did we see anything distinct? I mean, did you see anything distinctly different? Uh, not me yeah, personally, I mean, but I, I think there is a there maybe was some coaching to uh, take better shots, take better quality shots because we you know, saw the difference. Um, I think the. Uh, the onus on uh, trying to play through the lines uh, was a little bit better. We still we still push to the wings more often than not. We don't, you know, we don't uh, make that incisive pass through the middle mm -hmm. when it's on. There was a point where there were a couple runners making making runs, and we like pass it sideways. 
and it's just like, and that's like kind of late in the match. It was, I think it was like 80th something minute. You know, Etienne and another player both making runs. Ball didn't go to them, and it's just, yeah. There's a bit of that that I think uh, just isn't happening, and you know that's partly coaching, but it's also you know the players as well. Like it's gotta be muscle memory probably, uh, and yes, a lot of these players still haven't played a ton of minutes together, so that's understandable. Like we can give them the benefit of the doubt that it's early, but yeah, there are some uh, some aspects that's. Okay, you see a little bit of improvement from the last match, but uh, yeah, you know, I mean, obviously, we, uh, I don't know, it, it, like the the type of shots, the quality of shots with that, that's that's a, a good step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. All right. And and so, so, oh, sorry, Mark, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you uh, you go ahead actually. No, it's 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 a new uh, topic, so why don't you finish up? Oh well, I was actually gonna. Uh, because you kind of mentioned uh, the passing there, um, and so I was going to use that to cue my Almada just love yeah. fest. Holy shit, man! <laughs> like <laughs> some of the passes that he finds, like he found a couple to Caleb Wiley. It's like, how, dog? How did you see that? And then the through ball that was called offside, like the commentator said, it beat seven defenders. Like how, you know? Visionary. And it's, it's just it's incredible, but I do think. Um, like, you want a system that allows great players to be great, obviously, but it just feels like we're more relying on the greatness right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it feels like outside of Almada, you know, having that, you know, a savant-like vision, um, it doesn't really seem like anybody else would necessarily find that pass. Um, and then I agree with you as well in terms of, and to, as you know, something I noticed with, for example, between Almada and Aruju, just like the chemistry being a little off, you know, some kind of like gesturing and, you know, uh, intense conversations, let's say, that teammates have sometimes. Um, and so, you know, that doesn't worry me too much. I think that that's all part of it. But uh, yeah, you can definitely, I definitely think there's a bit of, uh, they're still figuring out how to play with each other. Uh, because yeah, like you see the runs and it's like, ooh, but then it doesn't, you know, ball doesn't come. And it's just, especially again, going back to facing teams that sit deep, those moments are flashes. And so it's like, if you don't see it, then the moment's gone, the fence is back, and the opportunity is pretty much lost. And then you're having to start from scratch. Um, now, I will say one thing that I th thought we did better this match was counter press. Um, and that's something that a team like Atlanta United is going to have to consistently do. You know, like at the end of the day, when teams are sitting back, like you have to risk the ball right like you can't just play keep away mm -hmm. but like winning the ball back in those moments are often what leads to good shots and goals so um i thought that was improved but yeah it's all it's all just a work in progress and i think a lot of these players are gonna have to figure out like you know what to do in certain situations and really just matches like these in general Ooh. all right oh. I think we lost uh, AJ for a second. Let's get him back. There yeah, he is. There he is. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I, I, I was like, so entranced with listening to what you were saying because you were making such a good point. And uh, I didn't get to finish sharing it out, but I'll, I'll watch the replay. <laughs> but, what was last year? Uh, about the counter-pressing, essentially. Yeah. Uh, but, Winning those second balls and stuff. Yeah. Super yeah. important. They, yeah. Like one of the commenters said it earlier in the chat. Uh, the, the team showed grit, and I think that that's a good representation of that. Absolutely. And it's that. Uh, so, okay, yeah, you know, we're we're definitely showing that uh, that grit to come back. Uh, you know, heads don't drop. We still are uh, conceding uh, first at the bed sometimes, and it's yeah, that's very frustrating. Uh, but also, it's yeah. Uh, this is not such a but uh yeah it's just the number of balls that Rooks Lenny puts in and it's just like yeah okay you know it's it's not a bad idea on some of those but some of the other ones it's just he's just pumping balls in and you know I, hopefully with uh Yakumaki's um that it will be you know like an end product on those because 
yeah, he is that type of forward that will end up on those type of balls. But uh, before he came on, it's just yeah, it's just too many hidden hopes. Not not enough pullbacks. Not enough variety. Not enough you know like early balls. Not enough uh, you know uh, balls on the ground. Um, it's just yeah, it's too predictable at times. And yeah, we know we know he can put a quality ball in. Like if, if we gotta play to our strengths, and if, sometimes it just doesn't seem like it. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So what else do we got? Um, Dan says a vertical player like Marcelino Moreno would have exploited all the space in the last fifteen minutes or so. Mm, okay. Uh, I don't know if the the. Okay. Yeah, it, it's I a little it's bit. I think it's a big that. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think it's it's that. It's the players that can, uh, you know, beat a player and create, you know, create a shot for himself or create a shot for another player. Those are the type of players that, you know, can break down deep blocks. And so agreed, uh, Marcelino Mario has that ability and has shown, I think at times when he was with us, that... Um, you know that uh, that clutch ability to uh, you know to find whatever it, whatever we needed to, to win the game, whether it was uh, a long ball from running out the defense. And so, in that sense, I agree. Uh, but I think yeah, you would have seen some disgruntled players that uh, just you know they're not playing. It's just it's one of those. And I, I think yeah. it's this. It's like Derek Etienne is probably uh, a player that's more naturally on the wing versus Marcelino Moreno, who's occupying a lot of the same spaces that Thiago Almada. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's kind of the thing. It's like you have a player that can beat players, but also be a runner. Just didn't have last season. Mm-hmm. Just to answer this question, Elliot, uh, Sosa will be back next game. This was his last suspended game. Um right. So Gavin says, not every week we'll get a winner. I'm not sure everyone will want that, but we're really we were really robbed tonight. GG will be a problem, but I just want to see him start. I think he'll, uh, depending on how many days of training he gets in, and <laughs> he's not feeling like he got a knock after that fall. Um, hopefully not. Right. So uh, let's see. Apparently Rosetta should have uh, been offsides, according to my dad, because NTN was offside when he took the shot, so it looked it looked from one of the angles or so it looked from one of the angles <laughs> well you're is your dad hey, a you soccer analyst <laughs> uh, i mean hey you he could be right and that's the thing like uh you know i guess in terms of vr you know they're not perfect you know the refs were not perfect and so you know we we won one we lost one yes yeah. anthony just i said this kind of point but he put it a lot better than i did a goal makes it far more interesting story than a non-goal in soccer, and I completely agree. Um, the offside IMO is onside if the AR doesn't say it's off. Uh, That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Bro, it was just it was too close for VAR to turn over, and like I said, because especially since we don't do lines in this league, uh, and so yeah, like I don't know, man. Yeah, just 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 leave it. What about? <laughs> Did you? Did anyone get a better angle with that one ball that went out of bounds, and the AR called it a corner, and then the main ref decided to oh, call yeah. it a throw, and, our, and Mike Conti was about to walk out of the stadium. When he's heard that. I, I didn't I actually miss that myself, but I saw people talking about it. Yeah, yeah, it was. I didn't get a, a good angle, but like seeing it from the stadium, it looked like a corner initially. Uh, but you know what? I I wasn't surprised that it was called. Uh, for a throw-in because it was very close. Like it was kicked so high that you just can't really tell, like in relation to the flag, where it went. Mm-hmm. Even though Parata ultimately had that offsides ruled against him, do you do we think that there were any penalty shouts from the defenders making uh, it tight for Gigi? Mm-hmm. Uh, on the push off. Yeah. When uh, he went up for the header. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a pretty good shout, I would say. Uh, if uh, I haven't been able to see it back fully, but um, you know, I think if it were called, yeah, no, 
obviously I wouldn't complain, but on a neutral level, I think, I, you know, I think we've seen both. Like, that's, but, um, the fact that it wasn't called, I mean, well, he missed the ball, so it's just like, you know, I mean, that that's part of it, too. But, uh, you know, if, uh, if the ball had landed on his, uh, his body or his head, and then he was pushed off, it'd be an interesting. Yeah. Um, there weren't any shouts that was like, uh, to me on first look that looked like a penalty. Um, then this, you know, the broadcast that we watched didn't really show that many replays for potential penalties. Uh, but there was not, there was no incident that jumped out to be like, oh, how was that not reviewed? How was that not called? You know, it's just, yeah, there's some, some half shouts, but, um, I think it would have been like, like it, put it this way, not anything that I expect. I would have been surprised if like one of those were called was actually called a penalty. Um, another commenter, I believe, a Celtic fan here says, "Great Celtic shirt." Uh, don't expect Yakamakis to dribble. His link up play isn't great, and his first touch outside the box is at times shocking. But he will score one touch finishes in the box, and that's pretty much what we need. So, well, it's yeah, it's, it's a poacher. You know, there was there was one attack um, where he ended up gathering the ball kind of in the middle, and he actually took a few dribbles and sort of led the break. Um, you know, I thought he was decent with the yeah, ball. Yeah, he passed it off to the left. Yeah, to Etienne. I, I think I wrote that play, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Um... So I thought he was decent with the ball at his feet. Um, it, it's, you know, with MLS, too, you tend to, it tends to be more of an open league um at least through the middle um so you know could be one of those things where uh maybe he gets away with like a touch that's not the cleanest at times uh but i don't know i mean overall it seems like he could be a little more than um a poetry like certainly he has you know uh it seems like he has the ability to be like a target man and uh bringing others into play as well as poaching and um, yeah, you know, like I, I do think it's important for your for your striker to be able to do multiple things. Like I think that kind of became the issue with Joseph is that by the yeah. end he was pretty much pure poaching. So um, I don't know. Like it, these are these are only the first few minutes that we've seen of Yakumakis, and you know, of course, we want to see like actual full games so we can get a, a better sense of his overall game. But um, early returns, I would say, were promising. Yeah. Ryan Video says, first stream in a while. Happy to see they're still going. Atlanta United showing some promise. Happy to have you here, Ryan Videos. Uh, Baraka says, I would really like to know what goes on in the VR room, VAR rooms. Like, seriously? <laughs> Very frustrating. They're having a snack while they're, uh, yeah. <laughs> so they're like, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, that looks pretty close. Yeah, yeah. It's. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, listen, we've seen it at the highest levels. I mean, shit. AJ, oh. you can relate to this yeah. with ours. I mean, you know, oh. hell, I mean, even uh, I, there was a Chelsea match where a defender saved it with his hand like a goalkeeper and it wasn't reviewed. Like, you know, when we, we, we said this, and then so when I say we, I mean, generally in terms of like how will VAR work, it's still humans involved. So mm. you can't remove the subjectivity yep. entirely. Yeah. Right. And I mean, we saw the, uh, the World Cup. With the uh, you know automatic VAR type of thing, whatever it was called, but um, I mean, obviously, like that takes the human element completely, almost out of it. Um, at least with the offside. So, yeah. yeah, at least with the offside. And um, but you know, then there is that thing about the daylight uh, that would be affected, you know, like giving the uh, the benefit of the doubt to the attacker as well. So I mean, yeah, it's. Uh, I think ultimately, it's a really good debate of like, what, what would we prefer, you know, like mm -hmm. a uh, a VAR that gives the benefit of the doubt or a automatic system that, you know, black and white. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I prefer objectivity, but mm -hmm. you know, I know yeah. that. <laughs> it's, well, there'll be those. There'll be that goal that gets taken away because of like. A millimeter of someone's ass or something weird and then yeah. you know it'll be a, a whole thing again with the you can't please all the people all the time yeah right and that rule though i think will need to be very very descript and specific because it's that it's like if it's a hand 
you, you can't use your hand to score a goal anyway. So, like, if that's offside, well, then it shouldn't matter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Looks like Pretty Idiot has a um, some soccer royalty in their family that their dad played soccer mm-hmm. in Germany and did try to re- Germany did try and recruit him at least to try out for the World Cup roster in the eighties. It's pretty impressive. Um, nice. Zoro Rart says if Almada continues his current tra- trajectory, he will be subject to serious offers from Euro in the summer. Uh, yeah, we're we're definitely clocking that trajectory, um, and we're expecting it as well. Hopefully, we can just get a really really tasty return on it that we can go out and try and find uh, the next Almada, I guess. Well, and honestly, depending on who they sell them to, like if they sell them to Benfica or something, get that sell-on clause, dog, because yeah. I think oh, yeah. Almada is, has like very good player, borderline star in Europe potential. Like, mm-hmm. um, I mean, he's already getting calls with the uh, Argentina national team. Of course, we know he was there at the World Cup, but no, I mean, I think that uh, Almada has more than shown that he's the real deal. Again, I just it's his ability to find a pass it's just, it's just <laughs> yeah. stupid sometimes yeah <laughs> right and, and that's the thing it's like yeah um like let's think about his game right like in terms of like weaknesses in his game as a playmaker at 10 like really there's <laughs> like he he should be in europe like <laughs> yeah because they're i mean okay uh, I would say maybe, okay, he doesn't really get inside the box very much, okay? We'll give him that, you know? Uh, he's not, um, you know, at least uh, so far anyway, uh, the type of player that... Um, just, that's hard to say, too. I mean, yeah, he's beating players left and right. He's, you know, shooting from outside the box with precision, free kicks. Like, it's... Like and, and he works pretty hard. Yeah. Like and you very press resistant. Like it's I don't know. I'm I'm reaching if I'm trying to find like yeah. <laughs> weaknesses in his game. Maybe maybe his uh his header game is not very good. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was never gonna be <laughs> That's the reach. <laughs> right. Yeah. But that, yeah. that's the thing he can't reach. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no, I agree. Like, especially the hardworking bit, I think is important because, you know, the number 10 position has changed over the years. You can't have those, like, panache players anymore that just, you know, float around and... Luxury players. Exactly, yeah. Like, but I think he has the tools to be, yeah, much more than a luxury player. So I, right. um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, he's definitely a player where I'm going to be following his career after he leaves Atlanta United and enjoying it, you know, very much while he's still here. Yeah. Right. Because, yeah, if, if we compare Thiago Almada to Miguel Miron, like, they're vastly different type of players, even though right. they both play, uh, they played the 10 for us. Mm-hmm. I mean, Miguel Miron is more of the pace, uh, beat you on the, uh, you know, beat you on a ball over the top, um, you know, and to be able to find some quality in the final third, uh, at least this season. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, Thiago Almada, he's just like, technically just everything everything you want in a 10 almost pretty much mm-hmm. and, uh, and be able to you know, pick a pass find a shot just <laughs> yeah. like, and, and it's not the decision making as well yes. like, at his young age like there's not usually a pass where you're like oh, what? like okay that was I was ambitious mm-hmm. like it's it's really like I was <laughs> We couldn't even have, like fathom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's amazing. But is he good enough to replace Kevin De Bruyne at City? Because that's what Connor was <laughs> asking about. Uh, a different player, uh, <laughs> because it's a lot to ask uh, in terms of uh, you know a Man City eight. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, basically. You know, you pretty much have to be able to do every single, every single thing. And, yeah. <laughs> so, no. But can you get there? Maybe. Yeah. Um, obviously, different sizes. He would be a little bit more like maybe a David Silva type of 
player. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But right sided. Uh, I, I could see that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bernardo Silva. Mm -hmm. That's happened. What did you guys think of Aruju tonight? A lot more composed. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and there was one play where he skinned his man, got the give and go, and yeah, was able to find. Uh, what was the player on the end of that play? But uh, but either way, like it was a good play, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think he was a lot more in control of his emotions. And Didn't miss a penalty kick. So that's a good. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> but not letting the emotions of the game uh, get carried away. Yeah, and he also so just looking up his stats here on uh, Fought Mob, um, I was curious about well. For for so for Ruju, um, so I think I don't know if I mentioned this on the stream last week, but he led the uh, the entire match in take ons, successful take ons with six. And you know my thing is, um, I think that in watching him last week, and you know just thinking about kind of his game overall, like obviously uh, goal contributions is not necessarily uh, his thing, or at least ha hasn't really been with Atlanta United so far. But he kind of reminds me of what Tito gave us um, in terms yeah. of uh, that pacey winger taking players on, earning fouls. He earned three fouls today. Um, and I think that, yeah, I think that he's the type of player that can uh, help you help the team progress the ball up the field um, and, and, you know, help bring others into it. Um, now Mark, I you're missing one Tito comparison, though. The thighs. Oh man! They both yeah. do the thighs. Do wait, does he? Yeah, they both ride up their shorts a lot. <laughs> I, you know, yeah. I don't uh, look for that, so I'll have to look hey, for that. How can you? <laughs> it's it's blinding. <laughs> Mark is not a thigh man. Uh, <laughs> well, I wouldn't necessarily say that, but I, <laughs> uh, coming back to the game. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I think that, I mean, you know, a lot of people want to write a Rouge off. I'm not necessarily there yet. Um, you know, I just think it's a matter of what is his role in this team. And I think that, um, again, like I mentioned, he's maybe he's not going to be the goal contributions player, but um, I do think he can uh, bring bring a different element, I guess, to to the team overall, especially when like and this is why I want to see Etienne in the lineup, because I think that. Uh, you know, what Etienne and Aruju give you uh, when they're on the field at the same time, like it's a nice contrast, you know, and then it's like you have to kind of pick one, you know, as a, as a, when you're defending that. And, you know, as well as Almada, as well as Yakumaki, it's like as well as, you know, whoever, you know, let's say Husatu keeps pushing up like he did today. I think that's where you can start to maybe see uh, the attack overall opening up. So, um, yeah, in terms of Rouge himself today, I thought it was a solid performance. Um, you know, there are obviously, I think the most important thing for him, like, is still just working on the chemistry, um, getting on song with, uh, with like Almada or Lennon. Um, you know, I thought he and Lennon had some decent moments. Uh, there were one or two times where Lennon underlapped today, you know, and so um, I always like seeing like the fullback make a different type of run than what they normally do just to. Just to give a different look, you know. So, um, yeah, like Arusha. I think got, yeah, Lennon. Lennon got on the left side uh, one yeah. time in this match too. I think that's what it is. It's like that unpredictability will be able to cut open some teams. That's you know that's what Gutman does so well. Yeah. On that left side. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think Arusha is another one of those players where it's like. It's a it's a case by case basis, you know. It's week to week. Like, mm -hmm. um, if you see like the fo the performances, you know, maybe not, maybe kind of fading, maybe not up to scratch. You know, maybe he goes on the bench for a match or two. You know, maybe you play Caleb Wiley on the right, um, and then you know see how he does in a role where he's allowed to cut in, and then you have yeah. him and him and Lennon, you know, kind of working off each other. I think that might be interesting. Um, but yeah, you know, at the end of the day, like a, a title contending team tends to have more than 11 players. So, um, 
yeah, overall, like I said, I think Arujo is solid, and uh, I, I, you know, I, he's somebody that I would start next week. I really liked Robinson and Peraza tonight too. I thought they did a really good job on defense. Um, yeah, Robinson in particular. Oh, yeah, yeah, Robinson. Yeah. He did not look like he skipped a beat from before his injury. So I, he was worried about not possibly being explosive like he used to be. My guy, you were explosive tonight. So yeah. It was definitely, yeah, it's like, uh, you know, okay, he looks like he might get beat. Oh, no, no. He, <laughs> like, he's going to get there first. Like, mm. you, there's almost a trust that, okay, yeah, he might be a little bit behind the play. You, he'll get there. He gets there. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, and he's able to make the, the right defensive to either clear the ball away, to, you know, uh, pass it back to Guzan, or to, you know, just clear the danger. And that's, mm-hmm. gosh, yeah. And Parato almost had a goal today. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, just skimmed the over the bar, and it's yeah. No, I mean, it's it's one of those like, uh, you know, he was on a really hot scoring run and unsustainable, obviously. Um, you know, kind of kind of like Joe Willick at Newcastle, or uh, you know, um, who else? But just you know, you get on a really hot scoring run, and but. I think his uh, yeah his goals will come from uh, you know central defense, mm-hmm. but I don't know if it's going to be like five <laughs> that he had uh, last season. But I think he he'll get a couple. He should have scored today, I think, or at least put one on target. That one where right after Toronto had to sub, he was wide open because I guess of the mix because of the miscommunication. But yeah, yeah. And, free header. Yeah, you know, yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, and th- in general, that is something I would love to see as. Yes, um, We'll see more of, honestly. It's just us being dangerous from set pieces. Because right. that's the thing. Like, if we're going to be in these type of matches, we're going to have to um, capitalize, really, on every single opportunity we have. So if it's a free kick or corner, like, that's that's something that I think they've got to work on in training as well. Some actual routines. You know, because we have big guys. We have Robinson. We have Parata. We have... Uh, who yeah, else is in there? Now. I mean, well, Yakumaki's now, you know, so like that that right there, you know what I mean? And we have quality set piece takers in Almada, um, Arujo when he's on, um, even Lennon. Yeah, we'll Lennon the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, you know, like that's something I would like to see more of, definitely. Yeah. Right. And, and even long throws from, you know, throws. Yeah. As well. Yeah. We just have to take advantage, like you're saying. Every opportunity is a chance to score a goal. So why would we not practice? Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, Michael, do we have anybody uh, that is backstage uh, that was waiting to come on? Uh, not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. All right. All good, then. Well, let's keep it, yeah. keep it going. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, obviously, we, pro- we prioritize those. If anyone was interested uh, for the future, just let us know in the Discord. If you're not part of the Discord, yeah. let us know and we'll shoot you a link to join up. Um, the last and everybody uh, on yeah. the stream, sorry, uh, everybody on the stream, smash that like button right now for us. Do us a favor, helps us on the algorithm, mm-hmm. helps uh, you know people that are not subscribed find us. And if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and stick around because like we got a lot of good stuff coming down the pipe this year. Um, it's going to be real exciting, real interesting. Um, and uh, Mark will be there, and he's always a plus. So, uh-huh. <laughs> he's always a um, My uh, my last question about the the team tonight was, what did you think about Miguel Barry? Mm. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. Uh, Mark kind of talked about it a little bit, and it's, yeah, you know he. Brought some others into the game a little bit. Uh, he had a chance, I think, early, and of course he didn't take it. Obviously, um, I think he's a serviceable backup striker. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, he's a guy that can do the job, um, has you know some size, has a pace. Like uh, you know, if you need to have two strikers on, I wouldn't be like, oh, Barry's coming on. Yeah, so, right. I mean, he was he he went back and took on some defensive and midfield defensive responsibilities he won the ball back a couple times he was uh in that counter press that mark was talking about earlier um he was part of that 
Uh, so I remember one specifically where he did like a sliding tackle to win the ball back, and I was like, who is that? Oh, that's Miguel all the way over here doing that. Okay, all right, that's really good. I'd like to see that effort. Yeah, yeah. he was better than Conway, but still doesn't have the finish. Yeah, I mean, it's like my kingdom for a finisher, but hopefully we have one now, so. Mm-hmm. And it's it's that. Uh, it's leading from the front, and yeah, that's what we hope uh, Yakumaki can also progress his energy from the front. Uh, yep, that leads the way for the entire team to you know, be able to press effectively because mm-hmm. yeah you know i think we've seen it and then we can see it in the other leagues as well if you know you have a hole in your press well then you're going to get played around really and yeah like pressing is just uh at that point you're just allowing them to just get ahead of you and play through your lines yeah and yeah, you know, I thought uh, I also liked some of the runs that Barry made. You know, I thought he tried to get him behind. Um, I liked uh, the runs that he makes, uh, like what you would say in the channel. Um, you know, like on the edge of the penalty area, tried to cross. You know, it's and the commentator made this point too. When uh, well, he's made more making this point about Almada, but. In general, when the person in the middle uh, floats out, then, you know, someone has to replace him with that run. And so, you know, I thought that Miguel Barry did a good job of, like, kind of floating to the channel a couple times. And then he was trying to find that pass towards the middle. And it was just, you know, it wasn't quite there. Or, you know, maybe there weren't enough people, enough runners in the box. Um, But then, like you were saying also as well, AJ, like, if he had to come on, like, let's say, okay, similar type of match, except... Uh, Yakumaki starts right and we're searching for a goal late and you know it's like team sitting back so we don't need that extra midfielder you take off one of those guys for Miguel Barry that's something I could see us doing you know and I think that he actually would be effective in that you know in that type of role so um, again very early returns uh, but uh, so far I you know I liked what I saw today mm-hmm uh, it says Bar- Barry is uh, better than Conway, but still doesn't have the fit. I already, already saw that one. Conway just doesn't use his upper body like Barry. Barry looks fast, whereas Conway is running in water. Uh, you could say he's like a uh, herd of turtles running, stampeding through molasses. <laughs> so, uh, Someone's a poet, too. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Nothing too impressive or disappointing from Barry. He did have a, one good chance at the beginning, but I don't think you'd be beating Johnson from that angle if it somehow was on target. Right, yeah, I remember yeah. he did have that one kind of like he could have gotten a chip um, from that from that cross, but it just didn't quite hit him the way it needed to. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it, this is what's fascinating is like pretty much all three of our strikers uh, are very similar. They're target forwards. Uh, and it's obvious, I think that's what... Pineda is really wanting as the uh, the focal point, and man, I don't know. Like in MLS, okay, this might this might swing, but you know, I think it'll be one of those things where we will find out if this is a top tactic mm-hmm. with the league, essentially, win MLS Cup because um, I don't know. I have my doubts. It's like mm. it's like to. To beat deep blocks, to continue to pump the ball in to the heads, it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be like a very congested. Uh, I mean, we might get some, but I think more often than not, how you beat deep blocks is with you know a lot of quality on the ball, players that can beat players, great space in the box. We'll find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think the key, uh, just to kind of reiterate what we talked about before, I think the key for us scoring more goals is playing faster and just recognizing yeah. those moments uh, when that pass is on, that dribble is on, and just taking advantage. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not upset about us uh, scoring from outside the box. Um, you know, I'm not upset at us trying crosses. I do like that Yakumakis is an aerial threat, but I think his mobility is his most important trait in this team. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it 
how it plays out. But I mean, you know, it has to be. We're obviously not consistently creating clear cut chances at the moment. And so how they go about, um, you know, figuring that out will be interesting to see as the season plays out. Right. It's that. It's, you know, we're not complaining about uh, the crosses. We're not complaining about, it's about the, you know, the dynamic, you know, the dynamism that we need to be able to win games on a consistent basis. It's not through just one way. Right. Exactly. Um, thoughts on signing a fast striker in the summer, like a backup with pace? Um, I do have one guy in mind, Ronaldo Cisneros. You may have heard of him. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, I, don't, I don't think he's. I don't think he's the answer. <laughs> no, no. He is a, uh, he is a pacey he's striker, okay. but uh, he's not what we're looking for. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens in the summer overall. I mean, yeah, because we might be losing a DP. So, um, at that you know at that point, we may have to retool anyway. So. I don't know. I don't know. That, that's uh, that's more of a cross that bridge when we get to a type of <laughs> conversation. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I hope we don't have the, the rug pulled under us, but yeah, because yeah. maybe at, at the very least, can they just finish the season with us and then right. we can, like give them a swan song essentially? I'm and hoping I think that... we all know who we might be. Doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I'm hoping that like. Um, maybe it's like a they agree a deal uh, in the summer and then you know allow them to finish the season with us. That'd be cool. But no, no. Yeah. Uh, Zorar says um, shortchanged by Arujo. He has to produce more goals and assists this season. Gigi's passionate and a fighter. He will press hard from the front and put rocket and put a rocket up to those that don't. Whip crosses in for Gigi. Yeah, that's definitely our dna at this point so hopefully he's going to be expecting a lot of crosses and hopefully he can get the uh on the right side of those in the next couple games that would be really cool to see um yeah yeah agreed there also though uh i think we do need to spread out the goals amongst the team uh that's that's a sign of winning sides where you're not you know um, yeah reliant really concerned yeah exactly reliant on one that scoring so yeah because if that person goes cold gets injured whatever like then you're then you're in some trouble so yeah uh definitely yeah it's like Almada, Etienne, Araouj they all need to be able to contribute from uh those four positions and uh yeah we saw Jose do today like that's the the beauty of it is okay yeah now like this is the thing. We've seen the quality from Musetu to a degree. We just haven't seen him be more aggressive like this mm -hmm. on attack. And I think we saw the, the fruit of it, like, really quickly, <laughs> you know, in one match. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, wow. He's, like, shooting. <laughs> and he gets a goal. <laughs> yeah, when I saw him go up there, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, don't shoot. No, he's going to shoot. Oh, goodness. And then it goes in, and I was like, okay, shoot all the time. Do that. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because uh, that's the thing. It's like, I think he's been, for whatever reason, just playing it too safe. And, mm -hmm. you know, just been a player that's uh, a little timid. Mm -hmm. Invisible at times. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm worried Robinson will leave in the summer. A model will probably leave or have a deal agreed for once the season ends. Um, yeah. And he also says uh, mess maybe messy in the summer. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, that, about Messi, it's like you know, like we we are a much bigger club than Inter Miami to a degree. Uh, maybe not on Instagram, but like <laughs> like the whole I get it with Beckham and you know the draw of Miami, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. But uh, I mean, uh, I think we almost saw Ronaldo go to Sporting Kansas City. So you know what? <laughs> That would be well, maybe wild. Have discovery rights. Yeah, I think it's maybe that they have discovery rights on Messi or something, mm. which I think that maybe went away too. But either way, like, why why would we not go in if we could? Yeah, yeah. I do think. Um, I mean, like, we should. I, we should, and I do think that like, uh, LA United would at least 
have the conversation, right? If there's if there's a chance that any one of you know these big name players are coming to MLS, I'm sure Ali and I would try to reach out. In the case of Messi right. and specifically with Miami, um, yeah, I just think uh, there's probably multiple factors kind of working against us. Um, you know, I think it, I think what's huge for Miami is that they announced that stadium, right? Like about damn time, um, and you know the culture. You know, it's a little more world renowned than Atlanta, probably. I think also the pitch itself might play a factor. You know, how would Messi feel about playing on turf, especially at his age? So, um, yeah, I mean, it would be cool to see us try try to go for it, but. Um, Probably. I mean, another thing, sorry, go go. but no. Messi and Jose Martinez, like if they play together, holy crap, like, <laughs> man, that would be, that would be the day, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd, be, I'd be straight up happy for Joseph to be Yeah, honest. why not? You know. Yeah. I mean, he, he would get all the, he would get the best service in the world, as well. So yeah. it wouldn't and... it wouldn't matter if he didn't move ever. Like Messi would still right. find him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> right. He could be marked by three players and if he got the ball, like he'd still be in like a really great score. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh... Uh... Any other things from the chat? I think maybe uh let's let's go a couple more minutes and uh All right guys. Call it a night. Um if you have any more questions, anything you want to have us look at, throw it into the chat now because we're going to start finishing up. Um, just one last message for now is uh, that uh, Messi will never win an MLS Cup with Miami, but then why would he care about that? Uh, and others think yeah. that he'll just stay in Europe the rest of his career. Um, why would he care about I an think MLS trophy? Because he has a World Cup trophy. It's like that's, you know, it's fair. But we can always say that he doesn't have an MLS trophy. He hasn't won all the trophies, all the serious trophies. So, <laughs> uh, I am curious what Messi would do if he would go back to Barca. You know, because like a lot of players from Argentina or from South America finished their career there. I'm not sure Messi would actually go back to Argentina. I mean, like he left when he was like 12. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't even know if it's like I know I've read stuff in the past about like you know his kind of I guess weird relationship with Argentina and you know like um, the the little bit of disconnect. Although I mean you know winning a World Cup certainly heals a lot of that. But yeah, I do wonder where Messi considers like home home. I have to imagine it's yeah. Spain, but yeah, it's got to be Catalonia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because. He, essentially, yeah, he's a Spanish Argentinian, essentially. Yeah. yeah. I think, he spe he yeah. spent more time there. Exactly. Like, you'd be a citizen. Yeah, right. I Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think his wife is, like, from his youth as well, but I don't know if she's she Spanish. Either way, okay, this isn't LA United related anymore. But. <laughs> <laughs> we should, we're just about that. <laughs> Well, um, well let's, uh, let's do a way too early uh, predicted lineup for next week. <laughs> um, yeah. huh. I think the same except for maybe Luis Abram for Parata, uh, Sosa for Ibarra maybe, and then um, uh, G ho hopefully GG for Barry. I think those would be the changes. And hopefully maybe Etienne for Wiley. Mm -hmm. I uh, I definitely think Yaku Makis and Etienne should start. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you know how they train and stuff is important. Um, I imagine Sosa will come in for Ibarra. Um, other than that, yeah, I, I guess I don't think I think Hosatu showed enough to where you keep him in. Um, and other than that, I don't. I'm not sure if there would be any other changes or should. Mm. I'll uh, I'll save my predictions for uh, the episode, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if that many changes happen. Mm, yeah, I mean, I it was a good performance. Opinions, but yeah, exactly. I mean, to a degree, it was. Uh, but yeah, maybe there are a couple changes, but I don't know if uh, it's like. He's gonna have to changes. sit and mull on it. Yeah, you have to sleep yeah. on it. <laughs> I mean, I. 
I know who I probably change, but uh, there's also match fitness involved in all yeah. this as well. Yeah, that, yeah, and uh, and that you don't just drop players as well if you know uh, they had a good game. Like that's how you just scrawl some people too. Mm -hmm. So you kind of let those things kind of naturally play out. Um, I think we saw that last season with like uh, you know Sosa finally coming in after Ibarra wasn't playing as well, but then. Sosa played the majority of the games the stretch, and so yeah, it's definitely like you know a lot of that that just kind of naturally happens throughout the ebbs and flows of the season. Hmm. All right, last two questions I see right now are: Did anyone hear the wording on Joseph's departure during the Apple pre-show thing today, or am I just reading into how they said it? I did not hear that. I wasn't listening to that pre-show thing. Did anyone? What's the wording? Did you catch it? I did not. We did not catch. We'll have to go look and we'll get back to you about that. Um, or tell us in the chat. Or Quickly. you can feel free to write it. That might be a little hard to yeah. convey, but free, feel free to try. Um, and also, thoughts on the goalkeeper situation in the future? Oh, I mean, we have uh, Justin Garces. We have um, Diop. With the other young player. Oh, wait. Uh, Vincent Reyes that are in the wings. We have... You know, three really experienced keepers that are up there in age. But, uh, yeah, I think we have a good crop of uh, experience and potential. Uh, we just don't have anybody that's, like, nearing their prime, obviously. And all that. So, yeah, it, it will be a decision that we need to make. It. Yeah, um, I mean, you know, I didn't... I don't have too much to add to that, uh, except, uh, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, Guzian's still here, he's still playing. Yeah, we're, we're shoring up everything else right now. I don't want more to be worried about and thinking about, so. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, Guzan, uh, I mean, he does the job. He, yeah, exactly. You know, he's good enough on the ball, he can make a good number of stops, can you shoot on, shoot on him on, from distance? Yes. Uh, you can, uh, but can he command a box? Can you lead a team? He checks those boxes. So uh, just to clarify, Pretty Idiot was telling me that they simply said, and the way Joseph left Atlanta United. That's the end of the quote, which I think was the <laughs> most definitely hitting, hinting at the drama. They didn't go past that, but it's interesting wording to them. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, it's just, it's hinting at the white elephant in the room that there was drama and that there was issues. So yeah. um, they're not going to go into it, obviously, but it would be a little weird if they're just like, yeah, it was an amicable, <laughs> both yeah. parties were okay, you know? So, right. I mean, we know we're, that wasn't the case. So, uh, but I'm also happy they didn't blow it up and make it more than it was because it mm -hmm. wasn't. So, mm-hmm. I mean, and I guess that that's what it would have been is, you know, <laughs> they would have probably had to go on a diet for 10 minutes to describe what actually all happened. Yeah. And I don't think they probably had enough TV time. We're going to have to wait for the Gonzalo Pineda tell-all book to come out. Yeah, or, right. or Joseph. Or, uh, or Joseph. Yeah, exactly. I think that's going to come first before it be Gonzalo tell-all. Because <laughs> I am sure... Uh, Joseph Martinez wants to say some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I could also see him and, coming back uh, to Atlanta amicably. Yeah. Maybe even being a spike hitter one day. Yeah, yeah. that would be really cool. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so I think that's it for the questions. Um, okay. So, yeah, you want to sign us out? Lovely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Mark, uh, let us know where the good people can find you. They can find me at Nichols Odeon, N I C H O L L S O D E O N. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram. Love it. Michael, we're going to go through what I do. Let me just uh, pull up my Twitter. I just made it. So it's at MW underscore ATL UTD fan TV. Uh, next time I'm on here, uh, where my name is, I'll also have the, uh, the Twitter handle on there for your ease. And wow. just so you guys know, this is real because I am now looking this up. So we <laughs> don't even know <laughs> Mike's handle on Twitter. I just ne never had an interest, never was prompted to be on Twitter. But um, yeah. when it comes to Atlanta United stuff, it's it's handy to be on Twitter. So that's why I use it. For sure. And uh, yes, Michael has been lovely and uh, you know being the man in the chair on the streams for us so far. 
on these uh, two that we've had in uh, these two games. And yeah, uh, give them all the love, give them all the flowers. And um, yeah, you know, definitely smash that like because of him. But uh, yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching. If you like, share, comment, subscribe. We love you. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Yeah.